Hello and welcome to another presentation in the Nuage Network SD1 for retail series. We will talk in it about two features commonly used by our retail business customers. The access resiliency in the branch, different resiliency options and how Nuage deals with the one failures and the local breakout feature, uh, a feature that makes use of the branch local internet access rather than backhaul the internet traffic to the data center. First, let's start by discussing an important challenge that most of the retailers are facing today. This is guaranteeing connectivity and service level agreement for the applications in the retail business. It is evident that SLA demands imply a reliable network connection. Today, more than ever, the retail business infrastructures are expected to be always up and running. Since sometimes the infrastructure may fail anyway, automatic self-recovery mechanisms need to be implemented. And last but not least, the question is, how are the IT teams informed of the failure? The answer to the challenge discussed in the previous slide is providing redundant connectivity and making sure that failovers are handled intelligently. And by doing this, we do not only provide one link resiliency, but also the possibility for different applications to employ different links or load balance across multiple paths. First, we may have the single CPE, multiple one links, redundancy mode. In this case, you may easily recover from the failure of one or multiple one links. And the new Azure Network Services Gateway will automatically handle the failover between different links. Various one link types as broadband links, MPLS or 4G LTE are supported. That can be used either as active-active or active-passive. There is only one CPE in this case and we are not protected against its failure. We may also have the situation with redundant CPEs. In this case, we are protected in case of failed links and failed gateway. There is another new feature called shunt link. It will protect the users in case they are connected to a single CPE and need to exit via the uplink of the other CPE. In this demo, I'll demonstrate the first case, one CPE, multiple one links. In our demo setup, we have the data center on the left side and the retail store branch on the right side. They are connected via internet and using two uplinks. Broadband, internet is the primary uplink, and 4G LTE is the backup. In the test, the back office user in the branch is trying to access the inventory service in the data center. We will demonstrate in this demo how shutting down the primary link makes the CPE fail over to the 4G connection. Let's go to the demo and see the behavior. We start at the infrastructure screen displaying the different gateways. We may see our branch 1 energy which is up and running. Now if we move to a VM that is located in branch 1 and try to access the inventory service, we may see that it succeeds. Let's in fact run a continuous ping to the inventory service. While the ping is running, we will fail the one broadband link. When the connection is down, we may see that the ping has stopped. Going to the virtualized services director console, we may also see that an alarm has been triggered saying that port 1 is down. But if we head back to the VM hosted in the branch, we can see that the ping has recovered. About 18 seconds of downtime have been noticed during the failover process. This is the time that is required to detect that one one connection has been lost and the device needs to fail over to the second uplink, which in our case is the LTE connection. If you bring the connection back up, we may see that no packets are lost and the alarm disappears from the console. This was the first demo of today's presentation, where we've seen how Nuage Network CPE reacts in case of a one link loss. Please stay tuned for the second part of the demo, focusing on the branch internet access. Another challenge in the retail business industry is making sure that the internet access is optimal. Let's suppose that we have several SaaS applications somewhere in the internet that are accessed by users in the branch. First, it might be a good idea to discuss what a SaaS application is. A software as a service application is hosted in the internet and offered to the users as a service. 
meaning they don't need to install anything on-premise. This is very convenient. Some examples of SaaS applications are Office 365, Salesforce and Google Apps. The specifics of these applications is that they have been optimized for direct uh, access through the Internet and some of these services are sensitive to poor network performance. However, the traditional way of accessing Internet resources in large distributed networks is through the main data center location where the traffic can be firewalled and or proxied. Uh, this can have a big impact on the performance. Therefore, we must ensure that we can reach the SaaS applications by the most efficient means. We need to avoid backhauling traffic and try to use the local internet access. And this will also allow applying security closer to the source and avoid the necessary traffic thrombling. The solution is to use the local internet breakout functionality and send the traffic efficiently. In this example, we could, for instance, use the internal MPLS link to send traffic destined to the data center applications and the internet link to send the traffic directly to the internet. The decision which traffic goes where will be made at the CPE who will dispatch the traffic based on the L7 signature. Now, how can the security filtering be implemented? There are multiple ways. One, we can use Nuage Network's embedded security policy functionality and enforce it at the CPE level. This way the traffic can be filtered at this level. Another way would be to deploy a virtualized network function on the CPE. It's worth mentioning that the CPE is based on x86 hardware and supports VNFs. You can have a checkpoint or, or Fortinet or Palo Alto VM that is running on the CPE itself. Also, this can be a proxy VM for instance. Once this is instantiated, the traffic can be transparently service changed through it. The third way, it's possible to use a firewall as a service, hosted somewhere in the internet. The CPE can form a secure tunnel and send all the traffic to it. One example of such a service is Zscaler. So in the demo, I'm going to demonstrate how the breakout functionality works. The demo diagram is the following. Uh, we have in the left side the data center and in the right side a branch. They are connected using internet and MPLS, but this information is not relevant here. Now, the way the platform is configured right now, is for the PC in the branch to be able to reach the SaaS application in the internet, it will be backhauled to the data center, filtered by the proxy there. This might as well be a firewall. Next, if the request is authorized, it will be forwarded to the internet to the SaaS application. Then we will activate the local internet breakout functionality in the branch. This will enable the requests to exit directly at the branch now, in the demo, we don't have any filtering at the branch, but one can choose one of the methods discussed previously to do filtering. Later, there will be a separate demo on the virtualized network functions, so I won't go into a lot of detail at this point. The way we will see that the request actually took a different path in the second case is we will see the application identifies another source IP. This being said, let's dive into the demo. As discussed, we will attempt to access the software as a service application from the branch VM and it is now configured to go through the proxy VM. The application is hosted in the internet and at every request will display the requested source IP address. The first request for the application shows the IP address corresponding to the data center 1 link 124.252.253.123. We will now enable the local internet breakout at the branch and see what changes. We head to the Virtualized Services Director console, select the branch back office domain and activate underlay support and address translation support. The first option tells the CPE that all packets that have a destination address not present in the domain's routing table will be forwarded to the underlay and to the next router. The second option says that once that packet is forwarded, it should be noted with the uplink's public IP address. This is done to make sure that the replies will find the route back. Next thing we need to do is to disable the proxy in the VM, since here we are not using a proxy anymore. 
As discussed previously, it is possible to deploy a proxy in the branch as a VNF and service change the traffic through it. This is just out of scope and won't be covered in this demo. So once the proxy has been removed, we can refresh the page and the SAS application and we will see that the IP address has changed. We had previously 124.252.253.123, now we have 252.83. We have seen today the demonstration of two features that are actively employed by our retail business customers. The first is the One Access Resiliency. This enables continuous connectivity for all retail locations. The connections are constantly monitored and in the case of a timeout, the IT teams are immediately alerted so that appropriate action can be taken. The second feature is the local internet breakout, which optimizes internet access at the remote locations by avoiding internet traffic tromboning. This greatly improves the latency and allows supplying security closer to the source of the traffic. This concludes the presentation. For more information on the retail business solutions provided by Nuage Networks, please check the links in the description of the video and stay tuned for the following presentations.